have curated you know this discussion with 12 cases some of them we have done goof up in some we have done something very very innovative as far as the technical part is concerned in some we have created some very bad complications and uh, we want to discuss them with uh, uh, with uh, the faculty and i i personally feel that uh, it can be very helpful particularly to the young generation you know if you guys you know just sit and enjoy so what do you think should i start samir This is the first case. Okay. 55 year old male, hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and STACS, raised topon in class 3 angina, fair LV function. This was at a place, it was not in my lab. I was doing live demonstration in some other country. And uh, uh, I, want, I was supposed to uh, do this case. A he he significantly calcified LED lesion with two diagonals you can see so the plan was to rotablate dilate first to do after rotablator to do OCT to see the character so that's what we did and uh, this was the OCT heavy calcium and everything dilated very aggressively and you can see a lot of dissection and then after stenting this was the picture what do you think what is this is this some sort of uh, uh, hematoma happened there or uh, what is this is it some perforation or what I think it's unexpanded calcified plaque, looks like. Yeah. Why Why then? Why it happened? Despite uh, rotablation and everything. It happened. Then I tried with OCT catheter. It simply did not go. And the IVAS catheter, I could see a big calcific nodule. It happened because I interpreted OCT very hurriedly, which I should not have done. It was, you know, limited time with me. But anyways, if you are doing imaging, don't be in hurry to interpret. Always in take your time and interpret. Yeah. So, after proper dilatation, we got this result. It is a good result which we showed. And I did aggressive dilatation just because of one thing. I repeat, uh, repeated the OCT run, which uh, the same OCT uh, previous run, which showed that this thing, you know, the nodule was on epicardial side. So I did not hesitate dilating. In the angio, it looks like is it, it is on the myocardial side, but it was on the epicardial side. And this is it. I accepted 4.5 instead of 6 the MSA. So let me tell you this was the case I did in Professor Mil Jamaluddin Center and follow up NGO done after one year was clean. Unfortunately Professor Mil Jamaluddin could not come. He was supposed to come with this angiogram. So the message here is very clear that if you do imaging, just make sure that you interpret it and you interpret it properly and give proper time for the interpretation. Any comment by the panel? I think it's a very important point and it's almost a uh, you know, discipline that you have to follow where you step away for five minutes and look at the imaging results instead of doing it on the fly. Yes. And, um, I, I taught that to myself after getting into trouble a few times by rushing through it. And this is the nodule and unfortunately the catheter, the OCT catheter, the previous one was very flimsy, optis. It simply did not go but then I pushed the IVAS catheter which showed this. This is another case 
A 59-year-old gentleman, diabetes, hypertension, LAD, PCI, done before four years and presented with anterior wall MI. Very, very interesting case, severe LV dysfunction. MI before four years, uh, I mean, LAD stand before four years, presented with acute anterior wall MI and severe LV dysfunction. And this is the picture. Now, what is the differential diagnosis of this picture? That's what, you know, uh, you should think. Before doing imaging, first thing you have to you have to interpret your NGO properly. What do you think? It so, prima facie, don't you think that it looks like a dissection? Yes, there is an right ulcerated there? plaque. Yeah, yeah, yeah there plaque is a rupture. Ulcerated plaque right? in the left wing. Uh, yeah, I also thought so. I also thought so, and I tried to push my OCT catheter in after wiring. Uh, let me tell you, this is the result. First of all, let me show you. We crossed cross side branch wire, dilated, stented, and crisscross, and uh, kissing balloon, and final result was confirmed. Now, crossing was difficult. It simply did not cross. It went like this. With difficulty, I could go in with the balloon, dilated, and then the OCT catheter went in. But it went in like this. It was an aneurysm in the proximal part. We had to, you know, uh, this, this was seen. We then, you know, uh, went uh, through the proper channel, again dilated, and stented in the left main, like this. And this was what was created, and then kissing balloon, and this is the OCT. You can see there are two lumens. You can see there are two different lumen. The same patient we have done IVAS. So all of you are quite well versed with IVAS. You can see uh, this was the dilated well, uh, that uh, sac. This is the catheter. And it is in the aneurysmal sac. And this was the, the stent which was completely malapposed in that region. Whether this aneurysm developed because of, uh, you know, the drug or whether it was there and uh, it was ignored, we don't have any clue because we don't have previous angio. It was done somewhere else. And the final result was clean. So, any comment? I think it, at the end it looked very good. And how do you size around the aneurysm? How That's a good question. I just dilated and stented looking at the left main. And what happens is in aneurysm, sometimes if there is a short segment left within a stent, significantly you know, covering the normal segments proximal and distally, I don't think you have to chase and go on dilating. Otherwise, if you crack the stand, you know, if you create stand fracture, it is 100% restenosis setting. And most of the time, because this becomes a low pressure chamber beyond the stand, by the, you know, either the, the probably the, 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 uh, the artery will collapse on the stand or there will be some thrombus which will organize. This is what is, you know, my hypothesis. I don't know. Did you uh, d consider any different approach with the antiplatelet uh, therapy here? Here we continued with uh, Brillenta and aspirin. In our setup, we continue for four months, and then I switch over to aspirin, clopidogrel, 75, 75, and after one year, either clopidogrel or aspirin, depending on you know the GI uh, condition. Here we continued with Brillenta and aspirin for one year. And uh, at the end of one year, patient was doing fine. Of course, the patient was reluctant getting the NGO done. Otherwise, I would have done his NGO to, to document this. But yeah, I could not do because they were a bit reluctant doing it. But that was, that was you know, a case. There was a lot of learning for us too. It's yeah. a 31-year-old male, STEMI, acute inferior wall MI, mild LV dysfunction, and coronary NGO revealed grossly ectatic RCA with total occlusion, a huge thrombus burden. The right, uh, uh, left system shows a healed dissection in the obtuse marginal. 
and the right is like this what is your approach in this case this is all the whole artery it is almost 6 7 mm artery which is completely filled with thrombus this case was done maybe 3 weeks ago in my my lab what do you think should be the approach number 1 will you like to keep the patient conservatively on heparin and leave the patient alone number 2 will you like to do thrombosuction although it is class 3 or number 3 what do you think or no clue I think the first thing you have to do is get a wire across sometimes there's less thrombus than you might think I mean, yeah but you, you know the answer here because you know what's coming but if but I, I don't think we should be doing routine mechanical thrombectomy okay. here there's so a small balloon and, and see what you're dealing so with I, yeah, I'd back up even before that first thing. I would change my guide to a seven or eight French guy. Uh, okay. There's no point in carrying on with a six French guy. You have so many more options with a sheathless yes. seven and a half or eight. And then I would agree, get flow and drugs. I mean, they're the two things. And okay. stent is the last thing you're going to think. Yes. Of. And this size stent also, Rajiv, is not available. In that case, you have to use a renal stent or something off-label, which I was not for in this case because it was an ongoing inferior volume I. So thrombolysis, I, th I mean, uh, the thrombectomy, we know that it is class three in contemporary practice. These are the trials. Tapas was the initial keeping the thrombolysis. Uh, these slides I have taken from uh, the Mayo Clinic uh, teaching slides. Malcolm, your courtesy. Uh, uh, and uh, here, you know, uh, 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 taste and total are the randomized trial which have completely shown, uh, you know, the evidence against against the thrombectomy, uh, I mean thrombosuction, particularly high frequency of, you know, cerebrovascular event in total trial. Okay, and this is the situation. You use thrombectomy catheter, you come, you know, take out, take out this sort of thrombus, right? Now, this is balloon assisted tracking, uh, you know, Samir he was with us and Rajiv, you were also the part, initial uh, 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 results were published and then we did a study of 65 cases in different uh, radial situation, different anatomy, published already in cath cardiovascular in, in uh, and this balloon assisted tracking is, you know, you protrude the balloon beyond the catheter to traverse smoothly and to avoid the razor effect in the radial region, which we used to do a lot before we published combo technique. And nowadays, we are using combo technique unless the things are extremely difficult. Now, coming to the point, this was balloon-assisted tracking in coronary, the modification. We went up to the bifurcation. Then, you remove everything, 50 cc syringe attend to the guide very carefully counterclock rotation and complete negative suction on 50 cc syringe nothing used to come out and meanwhile probably the whole guide catheter was completely filled with thrombus that is what was the contemplation by me as well as sanjay both so is this uh, six or seven french this is six french now I had no choice, otherwise I will never allow this guide to come out of the right coronary ostium. I know it can throw embolize. But here I had no choice because I was completely clueless what to do. So we very quickly removed the guide and kept it in the axillary region. Very quickly and removed it completely then. See, we are trying to pu pull the guide catheter back. S I, uh, the thrombus is filled and nothing is coming out in the... Uh, in the syringe. Then we removed it very quickly, you can see. And then, you know, we injected outside in vitro to get the thrombus. We got this much of thrombus at that point of time, made sure that patient is moving all the four limbs properly, again went in. This was what was seen. Here, now PDA and PLV both were completely filled with thrombus. So, I thought that PLV is bigger and again balloon assisted tracking, uh, 3 or 4 atmospheric pressure, 2.5 balloon, went up to the 2 or 2.5 balloon, went up to here and then again right in, inside the PLV, right inside the PLV. You can see, removed everything again. This is the guide catheter inside the coronary. 
and slowly and counter clock rotation 50 cc syringe complete negative suction here this time i did not allow the things to come out we again came out with this thrombus and then backflow a good backflow of the blood 50 cc 70 cc blood came out and then we again <coughs> injected and landed up with this result and then i never wanted to chase that small pda even if it is big, I don't want, because I have done enough. We thought that we have done enough, and the patient did well. This any, uh, now, coming to the point, is this an anecdotal example? No. In our lab, we strongly believe that you any, none of the thrombectomy, thrombosuction catheter is good enough for use thrombus. And this time, during COVID time, we get so many, we got so many acute MI cases, young guys, middle-aged, old, and we had done <coughs> these procedures. In straight segment LED, we make sure that the ostium is normal, left main to circ, if the angle is good and ostium is normal, or RCA having this type of lie, and uh, not a sort of a shepherd hook origin. This is another example which we, sh uh, this is a previous one, very poor LV, anterior wall MI, organized LV apical clot, primary PCI in RCA. You can see the clot LV dysfunction here. And this was the RCA dilated. Another complication happened, we injected lot of bubbles inside. So we, uh, patient was extremely bad and immediately balloon assisted tracking went in right there negative suction, pulled everything out, pulled everything out, and then then lot of backflow, and we came out with this, and you can see this was a case done before several years. So, and dilated, and you can see the blush, perfect result, patient was, was saved. Is this technique reproducible? Yes, if you go on doing it, it is reproducible, you can see how many thrombuses? There are few photographs. So many of them have not been photographed. So we are doing this thing. And somehow it works out very effectively. And to me, uh, for a six French guide catheter is my thrombosuction catheter, if at all I am. Or else, if I feel that, uh, you know, that the things are not ideal for deep intubation like this, then I will use uh, uh, this Terumo uh, catheter uh, eliminate, which has probably the bugle lumen. Now I want to know from you people, what do you guys do? Right. So, I mean, for aspiration, we can using mechanical mm. okay, P number, the United States. We do that, RX <laughs> catheter, P number. Uh, that is a suction catheter, can, mm. it can do that. And Extension catheter, I think working well too. Uh, mm. So a lot of time, the anatomy, the RCA tortuosity, you're difficult to get your guiding catheter done. I think extension catheter, any yes. extension catheter can do this really reasonable job. Yes. Okay, I, I agree with Tag. The extension catheter will be effective at the same manner. But first thing coming in my mind is the active respiration system like the angiojet, or maybe the system would uh, use the neuro interventions, uh, yeah. penumbra and so on, because yeah. they have the active. Penumbra exertion. is being yeah, talked yeah, about a lot. I have system. never used yeah. it. I have never used it. Okay. But this but is probably the cheapest thrombosuction catheter we can have. That's all. <laughs> I, I do think we have to admit that those yeah. are some of the most impressive results that uh, you may have seen, but it's. I suspect it's not always going to be like that. Um, Dr. Goliath started talking about drugs, and maybe Roger, if you want to say a few words about uh, some of our experience with sure. using uh, lytic therapy and, uh, and, I, and devices. Yeah, I know that they were amazing examples, of course. There's beautiful suction uh, results. But one other option um, is uh, localized lytic therapy of marinade. So if you put a balloon distal to the occlusion, your guide extension catheter wedged into the to the lesion, and then 10 milligrams of TPA left to okay. dwell for 10 minutes. Then the guide extension can go forward and suck out what the bit in between. It can be highly effective at elim eliminating thrombus. Yeah. We've done five cases like that. But only problem I can understand, and that is there in my mind, that that can work. But 
if the thrombus is more than a day or uh, 36 or 48 hours old and uh, then it can create problem but yeah that has to be yeah. kept in at the back of your mind and why i use balloon assisted deep intubation just to avoid you know sort of a razor effect and uh, uh, prevent uh, you know the in intima damage as much as i can yeah. So, Tej, if you had an embolization like a stroke, would you, I mean, you must monitor for that. Would you go and uh, treat it uh, in a similar manner? Um, I, the, the for the first time in that case I showed, I had to remove my guide. I make sure that I don't come out with the guide. Most of the time, once you suck the thrombus out, it is filled. And then 50 cc syringe I remove and allow a free bleed happening for 50 to 70 ml. And then again, I will close, considering that now there is no thrombus inside the guide lumen. Yes. Yeah. Just, I, we really highly appreciate your innovative thinking. Fantastic job for a country like ours. Uh, but I want to know what is the size of the balloon and length of the balloon? Yes, yeah, a good pressure, question. Pressure it, at which you... Yeah, it's a good water. question. I mean, you can use maybe 12 or 15 millimeter balloon. Now, depending on, uh, you know, the angle and depending on the tortuosity you see proximally, you decide what pressure you want. If you want, have to, you know, skip a couple of tortuosities, put a very low pressure, about 2-3, so the balloon is also very flexible. If it is a very straight segment, you can go up to 5 or 6 atmosphere, so balloon is little straighter. And again, uh, if you want a good trackability, and without any disturbance with the balloon assistance, you can keep a very little two or three millimeter out. Otherwise, you can keep a proper, uh, you know, uh, length of balloon outside, yes. So just, you know, we, we know that we see this much more commonly in these large right coronary arteries. Have you had experience uh, doing this uh, than the LAD or the circumflex? Yes. Either as an acute yes. uh, primary event or as a complication of a procedure? Quite a few of them are straight circumflex artery 3.5 and a clean ostium and straight lie from left main to LA, uh, circumflex. Similarly, st uh, almost straight LAD up to mid LAD uh, uh, and ostium has to be normal. I am I am quite particular about assessing the ostium when I am de deep intubating in the left because if you dissect the circ ostium you can expect a dissection extending in the left main going right in the aorta up to innominate. So I am very careful about it. The other complication, of course, is pulling thrombus back from the circumflex and it ends up going down to the LED or vice versa. It has happened, you know, during COVID time, a couple of times, maybe a little more, three, four times. But it was not a very, very difficult thing to handle at that point of time. Uh, uh, it was a little bit uh, up there uh, going distally, which we tried to dilate or push it in deep inside, just to make sure that the major part of the artery and the branches are flowing well. And another, yeah. another interesting, interesting question is, this technique maybe, maybe works uh, well in elastic arteries. And is it in uh, cult uh, calcified artery? What do you think? Yeah, I, I, it's a good Is question, Arutandil. Now, after doing maybe more than 100 these type of intubations, uh, deep intubations, you know, now I again go by the tactile feel. So beginners should refrain themselves doing this till when you have achieved a good amount of experience with uh, regular interventions and complex interventions. And I think uh, at a senior senior level, this is worth thinking, and uh, it has to be learned properly for at least two or three cases under you know sort of a senior person, and then only you try. Because uh, there are so many intricacies involved. Distally, you don't see anything, so you go clockwise slowly, uh, and if you have resistance, you sometimes deflate the balloon put it further, again inflate it, little low pressure, try to enter, all those things. So those intricacies, once you start doing it, you will start learning it. 
using local TPA uh, into the thrombotic lesion. Uh, I fully agree with that. But sometimes uh, you can have fragments of the clot because of local TPA. And those fragments can uh, go down into circumflex or remain into the left main. So these are the uh, drawbacks. Mm. I agree. It, at times it can happen. Okay. Sir? Yes. To uh, prevent the chances of uh, having stroke, can we use a uh, mother-daughter technique here for the first case where the, uh, the RCA was 6-7 millimeter huge RCA. Suppose we take 7 French guide catheter and we use uh, the technique which you are using for cannulating the uh, coronaries. I can uh, you, we, yeah. take, uh, we can take a multipurpose catheter, 6 French. And can we? Uh, that do will not eliminate the razor effect in this situation. No, not for razor effect, but to prevent the chances of stroke. How can you prevent the chances? Because of we are stroke? deep throttling the uh, GR guiding. Huh? So we are we use one guide catheter to cannulate the ostium of the RCA. Yes. And we take another guide catheter balloon to suck the thrombus. To suck the thrombus. Okay. So so the whole system doesn't come out. See, ostium oh, of the RC yeah. is still only. But in this case, you can understand, even the six French guide was full, I had to remove. Hmm. I agree, but I don't know, uh, uh, keep, keeping that crowding, how effectively I can do. I am actually, I, I have never tried this. Uh, just, you know. So because you already have, are doing this technique. Yeah. To cannulate. So if you can just. Uh, so I will remember this. It was total the artery. You can. You, I could have used seven French and then another six French inside. But most of the times it is not possible. But in this case, yes, it could have been possible. Uh, good point. This is a 25-year-old female. I think previously I must have shown in some of these presentations. Already published case in a Jack uh, case report. ECG showing inferior wall changes, young lady, raised troponin, and this is what is the angiogram. This is an impending rupture, big aneurysm. And everybody advised surgery, and uh, we were debating what to do. But she came to us, and she is of a marriageable age, and the parents were also worried. And uh, we accepted her for, uh, you know, covered stent. But then we realized when we measured with the wire that it was com uh, commercially available covered stand papyrus is 26 millimeter and aneurysm le le segment length was about 30 millimeter. So putting stent, you know, stent into stent, uh, covered stent, it could have been a problem if I cannot negotiate, you know, the second one inside. So I was debating what to do. Here, the San, uh, here Sanjay came out with a brilliant idea of preparing a platform there. With a 38 millimeter Zions, we prepared a platform here. And then overlapping two papyrus of appropriate length, we used and stented. We removed the aneurysm here. And uh, this, this, this was seen. And the OCT, here is the OCT, you can see. I say it is it is like you know this is a normal segment distally and this is a full moon eclipse type OCT you can see the the, the blood con getting converted into maybe red thrombus there around all all about completely in the complete length this is the difference and then you know angiogram done after 9 months was also perfect and here you can see there was very little proliferation inside the overlapping area it will come now but very acceptable patient doing fantastic before that we did CT angio of brain as well as all other areas just to rule out some other aneurysms for sight I want to know any of you have any idea about the etiology, could it be something else, please? Please. Could this be? Kawasaki was there in my mind, so we scanned her before taking her up again. 
I don't know. But this what is not the typical it? Kawasaki. Huh? This is not the typical Kawasaki. Kawasaki. So you're looking for something unusual. Could it have been um, infection? But then why selective, Malcolm? I would think trauma. I mean, any yeah. history of trauma, chest no, trauma? See, no, 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 no history of trauma, Rajiv. No history of trauma. So ultimately, we landed up getting a good result. Uh, now, again, you know, this, this was the first case of coronary aneurysm. This is another case. 53-year-old male, hypertension, diabetes, NST, ACS, recurrent angina. Patient developed VF with the first injection. You can see this. <laughs> Probably the thrombus has moved further. Very quickly, we reverted with shock without thinking much. Here, there was a, a you know, question we wanted to preserve the big circumflex. So keeping a little bit of area open at the aneurysm site, we didn't mind. And accordingly, we used a papyrus 3.526, dilated. And the result, a little bit here and there. And it looked like this. On the next day, this was the picture. Patient is awaiting follow-up NGO within a month time or so. So next time we can show that. And this was the this was the area you know we kept open. And you can see here the difference. You know the the, the second day. Second day it was not. This was a red thrombus on the first day. And second day it is getting converted into mix and then ultimately the white thrombus. Now, this is the third case of aneurysm. First two we dealt with on table in the cath lab. A 70-year-old gentleman, diabetes, hypertension, history of smoking. RCA was stented in a peripheral center two hours away from my place before two months, presented with recent class 3 angina, normal LV function, and this was it. What do you think? Two months. Do you expect the aneurysm to develop in two months with the drug? Tejas, uh, do you have the original angiogram? Before? No, no, that was not done in my center. This, yeah, this is the one we saw. The original one where it was tented was not available with me, but patient had he uh, angiogram done there and with this patient came to us for the aneurysm closure but the previous uh, uh, intervention was that done because of a coronary aneurysm or this is a new aneurysm this was a new aneurysm at that point of time there was no aneurysm as per th that report now very interestingly the problem here is this shepherd hook. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we had a very similar case to this, uh, to, to a very, very similar case. Yeah. And this was probably a contained rupture. Yes. But, uh, you know, what was the etiology? So, so something happened during the intervention, yeah. a okay. perforation of some sort, but it was, okay. or, or a sort of a, a, deep, a deep dissection slash perfor okay. contained perforation. Okay. So uh, now, the, the other so differential yeah. diagnosis, though, because if the patient is unwell, the other thing may be uh, mycotic aneurysm. Uh, if yeah. the patient is well and no sign of any sepsis, you, but that's you, something you have to keep you, in mind. You, 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 are, you are very near, Malcolm. Yeah. In India, a lot of reuse of material has been there. Maybe infection. Yeah, yeah, infection. Case. Good. So nothing was going in. Nothing. I tried everything. I catheter. In fact, we damaged the patient. And then I think a lot of pain and other things, we got frustrated. We struggled for one and a half hours and then told our surgeon to take the patient on table. Everything tried, everything tried, nothing works. In fact, it was, the flow was, you know, worsening. And surgeon gave a cut there and it was full of pus. You can see it's gush of pus. In India, because of, in the peripheral centers particularly, because patients are very, very economically challenged, a lot of reuse is done and probably the, the uh, 
the system, sterilization system is probably suboptimal and uh, this problem, and pa unfortunately we could have picked it up, but patient never complained of fever or nothing. So this was the third case where we were disappointed and we could not help the patient on cat table. Th this, is a, this is a beautiful example just to show what can happen. It should be very, very rare, of course. The other thing, too, is if you have these coronary aneurysms, uh, I, I think the other thing we should be thinking about, it, you know, particularly if it's not you know, acute MI, is to get additional imaging with CT, because sometimes there's actually a lot more going yes. on in the chest than the mediastinum than, than you might think. Yes. Now, uh, this is, I mean, uh, this is, uh, is the slide which has been taken from John Bresnian's talk of complications. If all possible complications ha haven't happened to you, you have not done enough cases. Geoffrey Hertzler. Geoffrey Hertzler. Excuse me, sir. The yes. last case, uh, the strand infection or the aneurysm can be detected on PET CT before, uh, before the contemplating the, uh, the intervention. We, uh, we can do a PET CT, the, the PET CT can detect the infection around the strand, sir. Yeah, that, that, that is also right. Now, in this case, I mean, Murphy's Law, if anything can go wrong, it will. If there are two or more ways to do something and one of those ways can result in a catastrophe, then someone will do it. This is again from John Bresnahan's talk. Yeah. So this was our case, 64-year-old male hypertensive, class 3 angina, fair LV function, angiogram revealed critical left main bifurcation stenosis, syntax score of 18, T-stenting of critical left main bifurcation. Patient, you know, we are doing it regularly. But here, it through our bad luck, this was the first injection. And you can see, now my question to the panel and it is, what will you guys do if this picture you see? And for the young generation also, it is very important, yeah. I think you have to pull back a little, try to pass one wire somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Uh, anything else? I don't inject it anymore. Yes, it's very important. No injection. So if you are not very experienced and it's your first or second or tenth left main case, it's always good to keep this thing as it is, put a balloon pump, call your surgeon and give the patient to your surgeon. But if you are having reasonable experience and you have done good number of interventions, including complex, First thing you have to do is first wire has to go in and ideally if you can manage it should go in LED because if you establish the blood flow in LED your patient will remain alive. Forget about two wires, nothing. That is what exactly I did. Now you can see a little bit of flow in the circumflex. I easily went in, again this time, uh, talk. which wire I used to uh, enter here, you know, Pilot 50, <laughs> with sharp primary curve. Dilated kissing balloon, stent and kissing balloon, and then I was perfect result. Patient made it. And for this trifurcation case, I don't care for, uh, you know, wiring the third branch or nothing. It's flowing, but even if it is not flowing, I don't mind. It's our, see, the most important thing one has to remember is patient has come alive in the cath lab and patient should go out of the cath lab alive. One thing should always come to your mind, no more ego issue, nothing. Another case like this, a 45-year-old gentleman, smoker, hyperlipidemic, Normal LV function, anterior wall, STT changes. CAG revealed, uh, you know, normal LED diagonal critical bifurcation, Medina 110, and normal SERC, syntax score 16. We had a plan to do CT, I mean, uh, mini crush. And, wow, you know, you think that it's a good case for mini crush, Samir? 
Yes. Yeah, it is, yeah. right? Yep, it should work. It is, yes. It should work. We also thought so. It was 7 o'clock in the evening after an exhaustive list of 25 procedures, including 7, 8 or 9 intervention, uh, me and Sanjay. The first guide catheter shoot, and this okay. was the picture. Patient was dropping the blood pressure. We somehow managed to keep the guide away from the left main ostium and wired LED. It, another wire immediately could enter and that we don't know wherever it has gone. First thing we did is it dilated and stented LED and the left main roof was lifted. We stented that too. This is left main roof, with big dissection there. We stented that too. And then crossing the circ and crossing the, you know, uh, di uh, diagonal, we did, you know, sort of a kissing balloon. And then we had an OCT picture, perfect result. Patient was saved. This was, you know, a real nightmare to us. I think the key was the, the wire passing, right? Yes. Uh, once you get your wire in. Yeah. And you don't try to cannulate the left main again. When you see the osteal left main, this type of dissection, remain away from the left main and do whatever you can do. That was, you know, the theme. And like patient's pressure was 130, 140, it was playing in a, at around 100. 10 millimeter low, it would have gone and we could have put the balloon pump immediately because Balloon pump does not work when you work with a very low pressure. Right. You have to have good pressure for the balloon pump to work, 70, 80 or 90. Right. A 68 year old male, diabetes, hypertension, hypothyroid, inferior wall, class 2 angina, inferior wall before 6 years, mild LV dysfunction. Ah, this is interesting. Six years ago, patient suffered inferior wall coming to us with class 2 angina. What do you think the character of the lesion? Any guess? My, now, let me give the clue. Run through, simply could not be passed. Whisper, simply could not be passed. What is the wow. third choice? In this case, huh? in this case, I tried it with microcatheter. No, CTO, I could not. CTO wires. Yes. This is what it is. This is a recanalized thrombus which has become tough inside. This is a recanalized thrombus. Honeycomb appearance. Again, just see this. Multiple level openings inside. And then we dilated and stented with a clean result here. Another 52-year-old gentleman, hypertension, diabetes, smoker, anterior wall MI, severe LV dysfunction, successful PCI with drug eulytic stent or LED, under OCT guidance was done. But patient came to us at, at that time it was done, previously the, this thing was done, and now this is the picture in, in angiogram. Patient has angina, what do you think? See the proximal LED, what do you think? We thought that we should do OCT, my, my guide wire simply does not go. Looks similar to your last case. Yes. Very true. You can see. Again, recanalized thrombus and healed dissection combination. Here you can see significant areas of dissection afterwards. And this is recanalized thrombus. And this is the result. This is the result. Clean. Yeah, this is, this has relevance with uh, today's uh, one of the case, a 65-year-old male, hypertension, normal LV function, class 3 angina, presented with us to, with us to left main bifurcation Medina 111 and LED stenosis. OCT and IVAS both were done to evaluate properly. You can see that there is osteal, 
left main also. Posterior left main was okay on IVAS. Uh, the area was much more. This was the OCT, calcium healed plaque. You can see, and uh, then this is what it is in the left main, all calcified all over. And this is a LAD osteum. And here is a developing calcific nodule there. Dilated and stented because the circumflex to left main was reasonably good at that point of time. But after stenting, what do you think here at the origin of circ? This plaque shift and very tight. Yeah, then. everybody will think that way. This is plaque shift. I also thought so. And I was almost ready to do kissing balloon and then deploy a strand, sort of a, you know, T-stenting and then kissing balloon. But then we did a low pressure kissing balloon here. It looked this like this. The things are almost the sa same, 10, 20 percent better. So we had a mind of going ahead with another stand, although the artery was not very big. But then we did OCT. Hematoma at the carina. It is a contained hematoma at carina, which mimicked like a plaque shift. You can see here. You can see here. We kept the patient conservatively. And now after three months, we are going to do check NGO. Clinically, at the end of one month, patient is doing great. I'm sure that it will get absorbed. We will take the patient again and check with the OCT, circ to left main, and do an angiogram. This result we accepted without, without touching the circumflex. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Yeah, anything we want to discuss, please, or otherwise, I think we are a little bit earlier than our schedule, but we can disperse to catch up maybe at around 8 o'clock. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Mike. So in the first case, there was a large nodule, uh, which you did a rota also. Yeah. And then still it was a persistent calcific nodule. See, rota bar at that point of time I used maybe was 1.5, but it had no effect on that calcific nodule. And when calcific nodule has differential calcium inside, rota will work very well. But if it is a robust calcific nodule with uniform calcium everywhere, it is a problem. I think Dr. Akasaka can answer this well. Right. To, to upgrade uh, the, the nodular calcium, wire position is very important. Yeah. If wire position is very close to the uh, nodule, nodule, calcium nodule, you can make an aberration. But uh, wire is far from the, the, the protrusion of the calcium. It might might be very difficult to operate. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you. Any comment? There's just uh, three things. Yeah. First of all, uh, thanks so much. I mean, th those were just amazing cases. Number two, that left main occlusion, the, the one that occurred the, the, with the guide catheter or coronary catheter. I couldn't remember if it was a diagnostic study or not. That was an amazing save. And as I was looking at that, that's a sort of typical patient that if, if that happened in our lab, they'd be calling for ECMO uh, as well. And the third thing is, um, everyone's obviously wide awake now, but you just went through 12 amazing cases in, I think, you know, 30 minutes. <laughs> and, that's a, and that's a lesson for all fellows in the uh, audience. Yeah, and that's yeah. how you present cases. Thank you. I think amazing. we can... Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Samir. No, it's amazing. I said this is uh, case after case and thinking and, you know, performing things fast and on your toes is the message. Experience obviously matters, but, uh, you know, this is where you end up if you do things right. Uh, brilliant learning case. <laughs> Thank you, Avtandil. And uh, uh, so today we can conclude. You guys can take some rest and have come for a very, very nice gala dinner. We are going to have a great time. And make sure that tomorrow you guys come on time because the first case will be 
Oh, there will be four or five cases again the designers collection and uh, you will love it first case is going to be uh, again a technically very challenging case by dr saito so please come on time and subsequently i am going to do another three cases at least and we'll try to make it important tomorrow afternoon in view of the request from many young fellows i have kept all the didactics in the afternoon by the international guests you know, the, they are all world authorities in the, in the respective areas, uh, working there, very, very prominent centers. So, all young guys should come and sit and learn out of, the, the, you know, those uh, their experience, and those talks are going to be real, one of the best part of the meeting. Thank you very much for your kind attention and remaining patient through all. Thank you. <laughs>